And, uh, you know, I've been in big corporate most of my life. But let me tell you that when we get down to the ground, big corporates, God bless us, try and make a difference. But actually, it's entrepreneurs that make the difference. So thank you for that. Now, what I'd uh, like to very quickly talk about is why impact is so terribly important now. And, you know, for all of us that have lived through COVID, of course, it's been uh, a crazy couple of years. But if we have a look at the, what's come out after these crazy couple of years, we have even more of a division between, I guess, the haves and the have-nots. Most of the people that, that have lost their jobs, their livelihoods, and um, ha are experiencing the fallout, whether it's economically or um, socially or indeed health-wise, um, are people that we serve. And, you know, there's grand aid going all over the world around vaccines, but it's not reaching the most underserved in many cases. So the conversation around impact and where we can have the biggest impact has never been more important. And then secondly, the conversation about women and why women make some of the very best impact uh, leaders um, also needs to continue. And, you know, interestingly, some of you may be aware um, of a report that um, I was involved in, which was women leading for the global goals, which is around why women are so critical for us to achieve the sustainable development goals. And not women only, but women incredibly important. And those of you that might want to go and have a look at it can have a look at it. But it's something that I truly believe that we need women to lead for many reasons, but not least because in many cases, their role in their communities is so triggering to make such a world of difference. So yes, absolutely wonderful. So let me talk to you, Sushma, as you know, one of the key partners of Avishka. This is your first impact report. What led you to do it? So uh, actually, Gail, uh, Avishkar has been at the forefront of coming out with impact reports for over a decade now. Uh, however, in the past, we only used to come out with the impact report for Avishkar Capital, which is one arm of Avishkar Group. Avishkar Group has uh, four arms, actually. One is a micro lending company, Arohan. The other is the MSME lender, Ash. Third is IntelliCap, uh, who is the brain behind the Avishkar Group. And then there is Avishkar Capital. For the first time, we have come with a very holistic way of reporting impact. And it's a very interesting take in which, you know, uh, this report has been prepared. It's radically different from what, uh, you know, people have been seeing in the past. And, uh, I, and I think what makes this very special for all of us is uh, it's a very relatable report. There are real life stories. There are real life people. Uh, behind this report. And that's what makes this so interesting. And very uh, a, a, a very important insight that came out when we went back to our drawing board is that while Avishkar has been around for over a decade, it's been 55 million women who have actually uh, got Avishkar group to where we are today. And we manage close to $1.1 billion of impact assets. And they've got us a long way here. And we have a lot more to go forward. So to women it is. 55 million women. That's quite remarkable. Tell me more about your learnings over the last couple of decades with so, regard uh, to impact. No, absolutely. So we've had some very key critical learnings. Some very interesting learnings have been that uh, impact is not static, but very, very dynamic. Uh, also, it's very important to understand that impact is contextual in nature. So what is impact to you, Gail, uh, could be very different uh, for Muslima who's sitting uh, in Africa and looking at the context there versus someone like me who's in Asia and India, the India impact story is very different. So one is getting the context right and not just the big picture context, but also the small community context is very important to understand. And 
the other important part of our learnings has been is you know while we were all very focused on measuring and outcomes we un we very quickly realized that impact is not about that one end beneficiary or the one end uh, metric that you're tracking but it goes far beyond that it impacts communities it impacts ecosystems and sometimes those softer aspects cannot be uh, boxed into a number. And so that uh, understanding of impact is a very important understanding and learning for all of us. Mm. That's brilliant. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I um, am often involved in discussions about what is systemic change and what is systemic change. Very often people are talking about it at a, a big global level and we have all of these wonderful systemic change diagrams. But then when you go down to the ground, right, for people like Muzalema, nothing's changed. <laughs> and so what a lot of what you're doing is to basically close that gap, which is absolutely wonderful. One last question for you, and you can perhaps link that to gender diversity. You're featured in the report, right? And you've got a long history. Tell us a little bit about you and then link it to what you want to do around gender diversity and organization. Sure. No, I'm, I'm quite grateful that they considered me important enough to be featured in this report. In fact, I see uh, a lot of my uh, fellow colleagues, uh, some very inspiring entrepreneurs like Muzalima herself, Swati Rai, who is, uh, you know, the, the brain behind the Avishkar group, who actually, whose seed money actually got us to where we are today. Uh, and all the millions of women beneficiaries, uh, you know, employees, who have all part been part of our journey. So we picked some of only some of these because unfortunately we could only pick a few of them. But I, I'll speak for myself to begin with. Uh, my journey has been a fabulous journey uh, at Avishkar. It started about 10 years back uh, when you know I just chanced upon a, a report which talked about uh, and it was Vineet, uh, Vineet Rai's face on the report which, uh, uh, which talked of men investing in the other India. And I was like, why is it always men investing in the other whatever? Why can't it be women? And that's when I approached him and I said, I want to be part of uh, your growth story. And he was gracious enough for me to be there. And I am uh, quite proud of what we have collectively achieved in getting us here. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I see the multiple gender biases that are around. Uh, we recognize that it is not something that can change overnight. I think that is the biggest learning to begin with is to first recognize uh, where we are at fault and then slowly start putting things in place to fix the problem. And so we, right now where I am at Avishkar, I probably have the, uh, the, the position to uh, try and influence uh, people uh, for a positive change when it comes to gender matters. And I'm seeing that across, you know, with my colleagues as well, there are some fantastic women who are doing uh, grassroots level changes. Uh, the women beneficiaries of Arohan, the kind of uh, impact they're cre creating in their communities. And I found that women tend to be selfish in some sense, because what they look out for is what is good for my family, what is good for my community. And when people start thinking that way, uh, it, 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 it creates a huge positive impact. And that's why we are so special. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Um, just on the, you know, thinking about what's good for my family and what's good for my community. That is the start of systemic change, as you know. Right, because actually if we take care of what we can impact, all, all, all the very best. Um, so that's really great. So with that, let us talk to Musa Lema, who of course is um, a wonderful example of someone. Who, I've been talking about you all morning, Musa Lema, so that's wonderful. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about your story. Hi, Gail. Uh, so it's such a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for, for having and allowing me to be in this space. Um, so, you know, my story started when you know, I was pregnant with my first child four years ago, and I realized the challenges that women faced 
and seeking quality healthcare. Up to that point, you know, I'm a civil engineer. I was trained in Zambia, the US, China. So I thought, you know, that by now, we really women had quality healthcare in Zambia because I saw my sisters, my siblings, the community, you know, giving, you know, having children. But then when I was asked by the hospital to provide my own birth materials, you know, my own scalpel blade, my own delivery mat, my own gloves, I was shocked that women had to go through this. And I was told that the alternatives I had, if I didn't have these, would be either to be made to wait or to be sent back, um, you know, to wherever I came from to give birth from. And the more I asked questions, the more I was horrified at the answers, because 63% of all women in Zambia actually, you know, have home births. Um, so this is the, this is how Safe Motherhood Alliance story started. I think Gail is frozen for now. I think so too. So, I mean, I can talk a little bit about what our journey has been like um, until she comes on. Um, so, you yes, know- Ms. Lima, please do and do tell us what got you here and what, what's your vision forward. Um, so I found out that- So I, Gail, I go ahead, Mr. Lima. Show you too well. Okay. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. I'm so go Not a problem. <laughs> so, um, in Zambia, as in most parts of Africa, sixty-three percent of women give birth from home. Um, you know, globally, that's almost a million mothers and babies dying annually because of complications due to childbirth. Over 93% of these deaths occur in lower and middle income countries, and many of them are preventable because the place of delivery and assistance during childbirth are important factors that influence the birth and outcome of both mother and child. Um, so when women are forced to, you know, give birth from outside of a health facility, they turn to what is called a traditional birth attendant. These are community midwives, village midwives who assist women to give birth, but they, they lack the adequate tools and training. So literally they use the sharpest tool in the kitchen and whatever they can find in the home to assist the mother to give birth from. Um, and this is the journey of Safe Motherhood Alliance. Um, we were established to reduce maternal and infant mortality through improved quality of care at the time of childbirth. Our vision is to prevent deadly infections for over 20 million pregnant women across the Southern African region with no access to maternal health care by giving them increased access to clean, safe delivery with a healthy start for their newborns. We have developed an innovative baby delivery kit, which contains all the essential items that are recommended by WHO for a home birth or a facility birth. This ensures safe and sterile conditions at the time of childbirth. Um, to date, with support from organizations such as UNICEF and USAID, we have distributed over 20,000 kits to 20,000 pregnant women um, in Zambia. We've also recognized the role that traditional birth attendants play. And in a bid to be culturally sensitive, we've trained um, over a hundred of them. And they, um, we've trained them on the safe use of the kits and they then become our distribution agents, um, earning a commission of every kit that they sell, economically empowering them. Um, so, you know, I'm determined to spend the rest of my days advocating for safe childbirth for pregnant women and for government to also, you know, improve their policies um, around pregnancy for, um, for women in Zambia and in the region as well. It's fantastic. I'm sorry that my Wi-Fi went a little strange. I'm also in the wild west of the African outback, so um, <laughs> I understand perfectly <laughs> some of the challenges. Um, Ms. Alema, what is the one key message you would like to share, I guess, with the audience and with other women entrepreneurs around what you've learned and how to go forward? I think one key message I, you know, of what I've learned really um, is collaborative impact. 
Um, I think I would not have, you know, done all that I've done on my own. Really, I have been standing on the shoulders of women who've come before me, women like you, Gail, women like Shushma, who have literally broken the glass ceiling for us, um, enabling us to carry out the work that we're doing, um, ensuring that, you know, for me, maternal health care is something that's very important because I know, you know, women's health survival is something that's very urgent. But something that needs to be done now. And of the statistics that show, you know, Africa is leading, Africa and Asia are leading in the high mortality rates around the world. So uh, what I, you know, a message I'd like to leave people with is to know that, you know, women go through, a, you know, a lot of issues during childbirth when it's the most vulnerable time and often face significant challenges because of this. But ultimately with improved health, you know, women in marginalized communities have more time, money, and opportunities to lift themselves and their families out of poverty. As we've seen from the group impact report, 55 million women, you know, um, you know have been um, impacted by the work that Avishka Group has done. And this excites me and, and lets me know that we are definitely moving the needle um, in the right direction. Absolutely wonderful, Muzalima. First of all, congratulations. Secondly, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Because the work that you're doing actually, interestingly, helps all of us. So thank you very much for that. Thank you so much, Gail. All right. Now, you know, one of the, um, one of the questions people have been asking me is, um, you know, is impact the new mainstream? or they've asked, um, you know, how could gender smart investing encourage more women to become entrepreneurs? And my uh, response to that is, first of all, yes, impact investing is much more mainstream. I mean, we see that when we see almost a sixfold increase in the um, ESG investing that's flowing from big capital. Um, those of you that you know are interested in the, the, the major capital markets will understand the importance of um, Larry Fink's letter that says all big companies must do such and such. We also see you know a lot of the rhetoric that's out there around you know how we need to focus on the just transition for climate change for um, reducing inequality. The issue is that a lot of that stays at the um, conversation level, a lot of that stays, and, and forgive me if I'm offending anyone, but a lot of that stays in the World Economic Forum at Davos, as opposed to getting down to the ground where things actually need to change. And for those, I know Sushma, you do, I know Muzalema, you do, and I know many of the people that are on this call do get out to where real life is lived. And so the importance of impact investing, being able to not only uh, put uh, finances in the right direction, but secondly, encourage entrepreneurs like yourself, Muzalema, to, to almost move from being a social enterprise to being a highly viable social enterprise, right? And ideally at some point, it employs loads and loads of people. Uh, this is what we really need to happen in the world, other than just create more corporate jobs. So that's my perspective on that. But I see we're getting in a, quite a few questions. So should we um, take any questions? Uh, there is one question. <clears throat> Thank you. One question from Meera, Meera Shiva who's asking, what is the support needed by women who need pioneering innovative work to scale in the impact space? Ah, oh, Muzalema, this sounds like your a question for you. What is the support needed by women who need pioneering innovative work to scale? Well, in fact, both of you, I think, could answer this. Um, so I'll speak for, you know, for my, for my experience when I was starting out and really um, did not understand what a social enterprise was. And I was fortunate enough to work with IntelliCap, which, you know, helped me in the critical moments to be able to come up with a viable business proposal, as well as, um, you know, meet with investors. So I think the support needed by women is to create an ecosystem where we are supported with both funding as well as tools to enable us to scale up our enterprises 
you know, as you said, Gail, um, without that, you know, how do we move into the impact space? When we started in 2019, we had only done, you know, about 5,000 kits. Last year, we did more than 20,000 kits. And all of this was made possible because of the support I had from both IntelliCap and other organizations who believed in our work and believed in our mission. So it's very critical, you know, to support entrepreneurs, especially women entrepreneurs who are in the impact space. And if I might just add there, Muzalima and Gail, is I think what is important uh, is to have more women-centric products uh, similar to the IntelliCaps of the world. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, equity investors who understand uh, the women problems and women businesses better, debt products required for to support women entrepreneurs like Muzalima to take these uh, further. And imp most importantly, uh, you know, what Muslim I mentioned was the ecosystem. I think providing a enabling ecosystem, well networked, where we all support each other is what is very, very important. And that's, that's the least we can do to help each other. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. You know, I would want, add one thing to entrepreneurs in the energy and mobility space are people from outside of the communities, outside of the local environment. You know, so I don't know, people from Colombia who get a really great idea and come to save Africa and India. I think um, it's really important for us to start looking for local entrepreneurs who really understand the context and to help a lot of our local entrepreneurs to achieve success. Right, and so I think because it is almost time for a grand hurrah, I think it is time for us to launch the report. And, you know, I've just been looking at, you've mentioned some of the statistics, right? You've mentioned the 55 million women. You've mentioned the fact that currently, you know, we have 1.1 billion of funds under management for Avishka with 2.1 billion capital dispersed. But that is not actually the point because, you know, everyone could, it's in fact, if we go down to the sectors and the impact, and in fact, the women entrepreneurs with, I think it's 1,500 women-led um, medium small enterprises that you've actually invested in, which is quite remarkable. So I think what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to say, now we launch the report. So shall we say that together? <laughs> now we launch the now report. Launch the report. <laughs> now we launch the report. Yeah, well, that's great. I couldn't hear anything, I will tell you, but I could see some wonderful pictures and I've had a look at the report. Somia, can I hand over to you to talk a little? Sure. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Gail, Shushma, Muzelema, for a very insightful and candid conversation. Uh, I would also like to thank SoCap Global, our outreach partner, and of course, to each and everyone who took time out to be part of this conversation. You can download the Avishkar Group Impact Report 2020 from www.avishkargroup.com, which is our new website that's we, that we've launched for the group. We will also be sending the link to download the report to all participants. Uh, we hope you enjoy reading this report. Thank you once again, and happy Women's Day. Great, thank you very much. And thank you to thank you. all the women on the on the on the uh, in the report everyone on the line who is actually i know really committed to doing something great with our world thank you avishka thank you so much thank pleasure you. to be here thank you Gail. thanks Muzalema. good i think we are offline now 
Uh, I don't. I don't think we're online. Are we still online? Okay. <laughs> I wonder if uh, is there is there time for us to take any further questions? Uh, we're receiving a lot of congratulations. <laughs> I see them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it says yes. We have time for a few questions. Yeah. All right. So if there are any questions, let them flow. I bet you everyone's quickly downloading the impact report to ask some questions. <laughs> so Shima, while we're waiting to see if there are any questions, I'm going to ask you one more. And that is, you know, very often, um, for people investing in SME enterprises, it's difficult to keep raising capital because you know there's only a certain amount of capital that's willing to flow um, to places where you don't get a superior return. Right? What has been your experience uh, with Avishka? So, uh, so Gail, you're absolutely right, right? I mean, uh, the capitalistic e economy has always taught us that greed is good and maximize returns at all costs. But a co post-COVID uh, world is very different from what we had always learned. What we have learned now is, yes, greed is good, but not at the cost of impact right? Not at the cost of your environment, not at the cost of your communities. So, and that's why when you said impact is a new mainstream, it becomes that much more relevant that, uh, you know, uh, we, while we focus on returns, it's important. Uh, it's also very, very important to continue the focus on impact as well. And so, uh, you know, that, that is what is going to take things forward. Mm -hmm. I'm just really quickly looking at a very important question that has come. Do you think gender, uh, you know, is there any specific goals that Avishkar has set on gender impact? Mm. And that's something, you know, that's very close to uh, mm. us. And yes, Brilliant. we have set a very, very big goal for ourselves. We are publicly saying that we are going to achieve gender parity across, uh, across the various group companies, the four companies that I mentioned across the group at every level from the board, leadership, uh, employees, and try and achieve the same for our women beneficiaries as well. So that's quite a big bo uh, goal for us by 2030. And I see another one that's asking about, um, you know, do you think um, how, how do you think men can do a better job to support female entrepreneurs? Um, you know, really, I think, you know, men um, being our champions, being our, um, you know, our co-creators in projects really would help um, women entrepreneurs, especially because for a very long time, we've been held back by structural, you know, inequalities. And the only way we can, you know, be able to achieve equality and equity as women is with the support of men. So definitely, you know, I would encourage men um, in, in communities and villages that we've seen in our own projects, you know, fathers come to, you know, Safe Motherhood Alliance meetings to support their wives. And from that, we, we also see that it helps with, you know, in terms of reducing, um, you know, maternal mortalities and increasing health outcomes for mothers and children, because they then realize the dangers that are involved. So we are able to also help you know, uh, women in our communities get the support from men, just as women entrepreneurs need that vital support, especially in the early days. You know, we wouldn't, we have, you know, we believe in a, an equal, equal 50-50 um, shareholding at Safe Mother Alliance. And this truly has helped us um, diversify and reach um, where we are right now. So definitely. Thank you, thank you, Madalema. Um... Probably we'll take one more question and wrap up the session. Uh, do you think gender participation in, in business is helped by quotas? That's the so, question we've received. 
Yeah, so Somi, if I could just go with this, you know, while quotas have always been seen as a protectionist kind of a uh, system, uh, I think there are other ways uh, to ensure gender participation and to promote gender participation. Uh, it's it's a good, uh, you know, foot in the door uh, to have quotas, but beyond that, it, you re require cultural shifts in thought processes to ensure something this structural to uh, to change, and so that's why. I believe you know uh, what Avishkar group uh, is uh, is setting out for itself of achieving the gender parity uh, by 2030 uh, very clearly talks of a generational shift in thinking that they're trying to bring about and so probably quotas won't help uh, it is having a very different outlook that would help thank you Shishma thanks a lot uh, I think uh, we we can uh, wrap up the session right now. And uh, if you don't mind, we could play the video one more time because I think last time there was a sound issue. I'm gonna play it one more time and we wrap up the session, if that's okay. Thanks, Somia. Thanks, everyone. So I'm back, guys. For, for anyone that was worried um, about whether I really know what it's like to work in these kind of environments, I promise you I do. <laughs> All right, thank you. you I, I think you were probably discussing some um, really great conversations about quotas. Right. And so, I mean, I can just give my perspective from, um, you know, the businesses that I've been involved in through my life. Change doesn't happen automatically, even when you appeal to people's very best. <laughs> right. And so to change from an old order to a new order needs every possible trigger you can. So targets, balanced slates, um, encouragement for people to understand why uh, the shift's not happening. And, you know, the one other thing that I would say, because I have been speaking to a number of women's, uh, International Women's Day events, for women in particular, please remember that um, we are not dealing with us against men, right? Um, actually, we're all part of trying to change the world in many ways. And you know, when people ask me, what's the best advice you could give me? I always go, don't treat people as groups, treat people as individuals, even when you're trying to drive change. So thank you. Um, I think perhaps that's the end of the questions. And I think perhaps that might be the end of our conference because I haven't seen too many more questions. Somya, can I hand back to you? Thank you so much, Gil. Uh, we do have a few questions, but I'll take them down and I will send it to you separately so we can answer them. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Again, once again, Shishma, Gil, Muzelema, and to all the uh, participants who've uh, you know, taken time to listen to this conversation. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Shishma. Pleasure to be, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Have a great Women's Day. Yes, to all of us. Thank you.